Given a disc, I can fold it into a cone. Just cut a slot into one side and then begin rolling it up. And as you, as you roll this up, it'll, it'll become a cone. The, the more you roll it, the taller the cone will become, but also, also the smaller. So, so it begins wide and flat, but then it becomes taller and taller and taller. Now, if you want this cone to be something like a water cup, then you're going to want to make it as hold as much water as possible. So that raises a question. What is the maximum volume a cone such as this can hold? So let's frame the problem as such. Given a disc of radius r, what is the maximum volume of the cone? So we're going to fold this into some cone and then we want to find our maximum volume. So it's an optimization problem where we're seeking to maximize volume. We know the general strategy. We want some expression of volume that we're going to try to get down to be just a function of one variable. Here we're solving it in the general case for any given r. So just treat r as a constant. You, you might be in some particular case where your r is, is 1 inch or 5 inches or 12 inches, but, but in general we're just going to treat some r as a constant. Let's think about how the cone looks. When, when, I, when I roll this up, notice the radius of the disc becomes the length of, of this exterior side right here. The, the cone, the, this, this radius becomes this side length right here. It's, it's not the radius of the inside of the disc, that's changing. As I, as I roll it up tighter and tighter and tighter, that, that inside radius is changing. So that little radius is changing. And, and it's not the height either, that's also changing as I roll it up tighter and tighter, it's getting taller and taller. Okay, what is the volume of a cone? You may forget, but it, it's not too tricky. Just think of this cone as sitting inside of some cylinder. You know the volume of a cylinder is given by the area of the base, pi r squared, times the height of the cylinder, h. Now, the cone isn't the full area or the full volume of the cylinder, so you should expect it's just some fraction of that. And in fact, it comes out to be one-third. The volume of a cone is one-third the volume of the cylinder that it sits inside of. Okay, problem. This isn't a function of one variable, this is a function of two variables. This is a function of both my little r and my little h. In order to change this, I need to think of some way to relate my r and my h. But it's staring us right in the face. Right here we have a right triangle. And so the obvious relationship between my little r and my little h is just given by Pythagoras. Little r squared plus h squared is my big r squared. That allows me to solve for one of these variables in terms of the other one. So for instance, I can solve my r squared, saying that r squared is just big r squared minus h squared. And then I can plug that in for little r squared right here, getting a, val a function for volume that's only a function of h. It's one-third pi times big R squared minus h squared times h. You, you might worry, don't, don't we have that other variable, big R, but that's not a variable, that's a constant. That's, that's not changing. That's one thing that stays the same, it's whatever the size of the original disk was. Now that it's a function of just one variable, we can go ahead and calculate its derivative. So we know that the derivative, well, well let me, maybe I'll just expand this first so it's a polynomial. It's a little bit easier to calculate the derivative. This is just one-third pi times some constant big R squared times h minus one-third pi times h cubed. Here, this, all the stuff in the front is just a constant. Pi is a constant, big R squared is a constant, it's just some constant, like seven. 
So, so when you calculate the derivative of a v, when you calculate your v prime of h, the, the, you're just left with the constant in front of the h. You're just left with one third pi big R squared. And for the second term, minus the three will come down, canceling with the one third, giving me pi h squared. Okay, I know that I'm at a maximum or a minimum whenever I'm at some, some critical value. I have to be at a critical value. So I need to solve when, when is this equal to zero. But that's not too bad. This is just going to be equal to zero when my one third pi r squared, big R squared, is equal to pi h squared. My pi's cancel, giving me that h is the square root of one third big R squared, which comes out to be just R over the square root of three. That is, that is the height that gives me a maximum. My, my corresponding radius I could find as well, but if I want to find the maximum volume that my cup holds, I'll just plug this in to my volume formula. My volume comes out to be one third pi times big R squared minus big R squared over three, all over a height of big R over the square root of three. This gives me simplifying one third pi times two thirds R squared times big R over root three, or a final round of simplifications will give me two pi big R cubed all over three times three, so that's nine, nine square roots of three. That is the maximum volume that I can get in my cone given a disk of some given radius.